Okay, Terry, let me see you. Uh, I've winterized my saw, but I'm gonna use a big saw real quick. This is actually my second take of this. But I, I started winterizing and the neighbor wanted me to do some cutting. I wanna show you a couple things. This gas can, you press your thumb on it, release it. And as it comes away, it's just gonna be dripping. So it seals up, really nice gas can. I just put a little fuel in there. Hopefully it won't, it'd be nice to me. Um, so the saw, uh, put it on full choke. Let me show you, um, dirty filter. This might be what your problem is too for rough starting. This one should be kind of sometimes rough starting. It's always, it loves clogging the filter up. I've got a um, piston brake so I can take that off there. You're gonna fully choke it. Brakes on. I'm gonna hold it between my legs. I don't have to worry about it kicking on anything because there's nothing for it to hit on. I'm gonna pull until I hear it wanting to start on full choke. I know it was kind of loud and trying to explain something to you, but I wanted to show you that a um, couple things. Uh, your finger should not be accidentally, you shouldn't have your finger when it, it's running where it can accidentally, if you go to drop it, you'll want to squeeze. So I think you're going to teach yourself never to squeeze with your index finger or you're going to have to keep your finger, index finger away. So I teach myself never to squeeze with my index finger um, so I can be pretty close, but I'll never squeeze with that index finger. Never until I'm up here. Um, now you see how immediately it locks. That's what I want. That's what I want you to learn how to do. Is that when you finish your cut, immediately lock it. Your hand will never go into there if it's here. It can't be here and there at the same time. Immediately locks. It works this way. It kicks back. It's coming back towards your face. Oh my gosh! And your hand will stay here. See how it hits? And now the saw stops, but it may still kick back. Still may come and cut you or lacerate you, but um, you'll be okay. Uh, more than likely, unless it cuts your throat, right? Um, so again, before you start it though, and this is sharp, sharp, so I wouldn't recommend you, you know, maybe a tool for you, um, it should, it should rotate, it should spin, your blade should be, your, your, should be relatively tight, however your manufacturer, your product is, whether it's here or here, to, to, to check it. Um, again, you're going to keep it locked out. First thing you're going to do, so if that branch is coming down, it was falling on you, as soon as it, you saw it was going south, should have locked this all out. You don't even have to shut it off yet, because here's, here's, the, here's the kill for this one, is right by the thumb. Just block it. You don't have to do that, but immediately teach yourself to, to lock it. Now the saw can only cut you with its non-moving parts. Um, and worst case, even when it's running, you'd let go of it to protect yourself as that branch is coming down towards your face. But you made the decision that the saw uh, was more important than you when that branch came down towards your face. And it was a wise decision in that case because you had your saw unlocked and it was still running. And you had a loose, um, your loose uh, climbing rope, your rigging line you use also, um, was loose. So uh, you could have been hit and fallen down, you know, eight more feet maybe, whatever, you, whatever slack you pulled out, you would have fallen that distance um, or possibly fallen that distance, falling over. Anyway, the other thing is your whip, your, uh, your, um, your harness line, your whip line, is, um, I don't know if it's steel or not, it doesn't matter. If you look up a video, this guy grabs the uh, steel whip line and um, he shows how you can cut through steel whip lines like butter with it, with your saw, just by mistake, just like a regular rope line almost. Just whoosh. So don't get any confidence about that steel line that is gonna save you as far as the saw hitting it. Um, that's not what that line's about. It's gonna help you climb the tree easier and things like that. Um, again, for your rough starting, clean your filters. Make sure you got the 50 to 1 mix or 40 to 1 mix, whatever your machine calls for. I think it's a newer machine. They're pretty much all 50 to 1. Use super unleaded, not regular unleaded. Use a gallon, mix up a gallon at a time. Also see you climbing with your, uh, initially climbing the tree with your um, saw attached to you. They're pretty damn heavy to be climbing a tree with. Put it on the end of your, uh, of your line, if you will, or, or come up with a string line on, the, on your belt, your same throw line, if you will. 
and then pull up your saw last instead of dragging that saw up behind you. Um, besides, that saw can swing around and do damage to your climbing uh, your climbing rope, and you don't want that. So you want the saw close to you, or you you have it way down far. So I'm not sure if um, you know how many times it hits your your climbing line or not. But you have it pretty far away from you. I I, I don't know why it's that far away. So bring it in closer. I don't know what your saw right now is about. It's below your leg. Um, that would be if you were, you know, thinking that way. You could say that, well, I had it that way in case I dropped it. I want it to fall. I don't like it by my hip. Um, I don't like it. I want it below my leg so it can't cut me. Yeah, that's that's all well and good. But you can't be uh, too scared of your saw, though, um, as far as uh, as far as this blade goes. Um, you, you don't. You shouldn't be too scared of. Uh, I'm talking about as far as it being next to your leg. It, it's it's gonna. It might snag a little bit. But it's not going to snag that much as it's swinging. It's not, you know, if you if you watch all the other climbers too, it's not going to do that much damage to you um, because it's going to want to stick. See, it's going to want to be outside your hip anyway as it's, as it's setting there. Um, and you're in a tree, so it's going to want to fall away from your tree because your hips here, and this this thing's going to want to, you know, be a pendulum. It's going to want to stay plumb, and you're not. You know, plumb from your hip, and your hip isn't. Your hip and your legs on a line aren't are not plumb. But your hips and your legs are this direction towards a tree. The saw will want to go this way. So you don't have to go that far for it. You know, put it in reach. You know, a reach so you can grab the handle instead of pulling up on the string all the time. Put it within reach. So you're going to grab your saw, right there. And yes, when you're climbing the tree, it might be next to your leg. But again, uh, don't climb with it going up the tree. Pull it up. So again, here it is out here now. So you saw your length, your, your lanyards here. Um, they got bungee lanyards even, but your lanyards here. So now it reaches around, and you're going to need enough to reach, but not the reaching you're doing. You're reaching pretty far. Um, you want to get over to your work area and work, work in that work area, not reaching out there, doing any moves like that. Um, of course, you do that no matter what. Everyone does it. Take care.